Hey guys, welcome to my living room. I'm just hanging out at the house and I'm trying to get everything done before monsoon season hits. And it's already ramping up as we speak. It's 45% humidity in the house right now. And just last week it was 20%. So today I wanna to get as much done as possible in preparation for monsoon season before it arrives because it just, it's less to have to do during the rainstorms. So I wanna get as much of the repotting done as possible that I've been needing to get done. So if you saw my last video, I'm in the process of kind of changing up our living room and uh, bringing the plants out here and starting to use this as my grow space and so that is my plan is getting as much of the projects done as possible it's going to turn into a jungle very soon <laughs> we're not there yet but uh, it should be a lot of fun going through the process with you guys all right so let's get started so a lot of times you'll see these commodorias uh, sold in like a four or six inch pot in Lowe's or Home Depot and they're sold in a clump so it's just this little clump and it looks Hold on, I got some in my eye. <laughs> it looks really unnatural and I've seen them forever and I always ignored them, even though I've been into plants for years. But I would see them and I'd just go, mm, you know, I was never like attracted to them at all until I finally saw what they look like growing as a solitary palm, how they actually grow in nature. And I was blown away. I was like, okay, I, I need that. <laughs> I need that plant in my life. It is gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Oh, there we go, okay. Nice fuzzy roots. Yeah, oh, these are super healthy. And I can't wait to start growing these as solitary palms. It's gonna be so cool to see how they look and what sort of looks we can create with them. So now you can see the root ball of each clump and you can see the soil I've just kind of released in between each clump. So that one is almost off there, but not quite yet. Let me loosen a little more soil back here. So I'm just massaging from the underneath, <laughs> releasing more soil. And the clumps are starting to naturally separate here. Okay, there we go. Hold on, hold on. We have some tangle. <laughs> Come on, there you go. All right, not bad, not bad. That worked out okay. All right, just gonna separate this last clump of two. I can't get over how strong these roots are. They're really tough. They're not really wanting to snap. Oh, we got it. Look at the little baby. Oh my God, it's so cute. It's like the tiniest one. So one of the things I love about repotting plants is checking out the root system and it really helps you understand the plant more looking at their roots. And now I understand and it makes sense why these are such tough plants because their root system is extremely tough and hardy. All right, those guys are all done. Ooh, look at that is a hot one. Ooh, nice. And it's got a new frond coming. Gorgeous. Okay, I'm gonna take that out to the compost pile. I'll be right back and then I'm gonna pot these guys up. All right, we're gonna try this again. We had a brief intermission. I actually mixed up some soil that I thought I was gonna use for these palms and it turned out I didn't like it, so I scrapped that idea. So I mixed up a small batch using some pre-bagged palm and cactus mix. And it's a brand that I was, I've used for years, but this time it seemed like something had changed or that particular bag was just like really heavy, just like really dense and mucky when you got it wet. So even like super highly amended, I always amend everything really well. So instead what I'm gonna do is make my own mix nice and light and fluffy and airy, but still moisture attentive. So this container is completely clean and ready freshly washed and bleached after using that bag of palm soil. <laughs> so we're, cha we're changing things up here. So I'm gonna start with my base. This is the coconut chips and fiber husk. So I'm gonna be using this. So let's see, how much do we wanna use of this? Mm, actually, you know what, yeah. Let's add all of it. And cocoa peat is what I use in place of like peat moss. It's very light and fluffy. Let's add some perlite. I just rinsed my perlite, so it's it's a bit wet right now, <laughs> but I, I had to rinse out that dust. It gets very dusty. You could just do perlite, but I like, I like to add different sizes. I'm gonna add some pumice. Uh, let's do, oh yeah, let's add some charcoal. So it's a good porous mix. It holds moisture, but also it's really light and airy, very fibrous, some chunk, some porosity, 
gets lots of oxygen to the roots, but also it has the cocoa peat, so it will hold on to some moisture, so it's not gonna dry out too fast, but it's still gonna stay light and airy and not get waterlogged. And I have these clear pots that I got on Amazon. They were actually a pretty fair price. They're by Home Note, but I'll have all the pots and most of my plant supplies that I use always are in the description box below. So I'll have those linked down there too. But I really like them a lot so far. All right, let's get you into your new home. You should be much more comfortable now. Oh, this is already feeling so much better. Okay, just gonna give it a few taps. Just get that soil to settle, fill in any gaps. With Camadoria elegans palms, you don't wanna pot higher than the original soil line. So I'm just potting up to exactly where it was before because they have tender stems and it could cause stem rot. Okay, I'm gonna continue getting everyone potted up. Here's the $10 cat palm I got at Ikea. It's time to get this repotted. This is a clumping palm and it's got a bunch of new starts in here. I can't wait to get it repotted so it can continue clumping and growing bigger. Okay, I'll just try to support it. And let's use gravity here. Let's, there we go. Ooh, look at all those roots. Very nice roots on this. It has a good root system going, but luckily it's not root bound or anything. So it's not like all wrapped around the bottom. So this is perfect timing to get it repotted. Oops, sorry. I was bumping this other palm over there. I'll test out my new palm soil on this one too. Let's see if we've got enough in there for you. Give it a little shake. Is it deep enough? Yeah, I think that'll do. And the thing with these cat palms, you have to keep on top of keeping the leaves clean and making sure that they stay moist because otherwise, yes, the dreaded spider mites and we don't want those. I think this 14 inch pot is gonna be perfect for it. It gives it a couple more inches around the outer edge. Where could we put this? This is such a shiny, glossy, dark green foliage palm. I, I love this thing. But one thing is they, they have to have moisture in the pot. They do not want to go dry. They're, I think it's called a rheophyte palm. It's, it's meaning that it's a type of palm that grows like near fast moving streams or rivers, you know, like on the banks, if you can imagine how the roots would be always having some water nearby. I wonder if I could have this palm like, no, probably not over there. Maybe over there. Okay, I'm just kind of thinking about some different areas that we could arrange these. You know what? I'm almost wishing that I had another basket. Okay, I'm moving some things around, experimenting with the setup. Let me actually switch this out. I'm gonna see how this looks in that basket that I got at the estate sale. Here's the basket from the estate sale. It's been waiting for just the right plant to move into it. Put the saucer down in there and it's hard to say how long this plant could, oh, Sorry, is that looking at the tip of the palm leaf? <laughs> Up we go. And these cat palms, they stay pretty small. They're more like a, like a typical height would be about five feet and they grow in kind of like this rounded clump. So like picture just a five foot round clump of palm. So they don't, they don't grow tall how a lot of palms do. And a lot of palms like sunlight, but these like low light. They prefer more like medium low light. So they, they don't want that real bright light on them, uh, even if it's indirect light. So I'm hoping it's, it's just out of the way in the corner here, missing most of the bright light coming in the window. I had this shelf in the corner before, this little Vitzjo Ikea shelf. It's just a little single one. And I like the look of that, but I have, I have my anthuriums on here because these are short shelves, right? So the, the only plants I can really have on here are like my small anthuriums or like the pendant anthuriums. But the thing is the anthuriums kind of started to try to face the window, especially the pendant anthuriums. When they're putting out a new leaf, they really turn towards the light and that never changes. Like once that starts to happen, you can't fix that leaf. It won't like turn back. So I was like, oh, okay. That, that is not the right spot for, for the anthuriums. So the best spot that I can really think of of moving this for now is really just directly in front of this window. My plants are a priority, so I don't mind having the side of my desk like blocked from the window, it's fine. So just right next to my desk, right directly in front of the window, and I'll just have all my anthurium kind of just coming down right in front there. And I'm gonna move a second one in here, but I'm gonna turn it sideways and just kind of have it wrap around my desk. So let me grab another shelf. <laughs> I mean, you could have both of them face straight ahead like this, 
that cuts too much into the pathway here. So I'm gonna have to turn this sideways. And it's just gonna go kind of wrapped around the front of my desk slightly here. And since we're in the home office doing some updates, I wanted to share an item I didn't get to share in my home office updates video because I didn't have it yet. But I was looking for organizers for the desktop and interesting office items that make life a little bit easier. And right after that video, Viazon reached out to me. So Viazon is a company that specializes in making tech organizers for your desktop. So this is Viazon's new rotating book stand and I've been using it every day since I got it. So it rotates 360 degrees. It has a weighted aluminum base, clear acrylic back so it's made to hold your books laptop ipad whatever you want to put on this and it has these flexible page holders so if you want to stay on a certain page you can pin your book open to that page and you don't have to worry about losing your place they also go into a little spot right here this little slot right in the middle if you want to put them away grippy part right here so it keeps your book in place it's so much nicer to have your book propped up instead of just like laying flat where your neck is just like cranked over you know if you're doing like research for long periods of time it's just so much easier to have your laptop open or you know your desktop you're doing your research and then you can glance right over at your book back to the laptop it's just so much nicer and it comes already put together so there's no parts or anything you have to do to it you just got to open it up and use a little bit of elbow grease because it is made to be stiff and sturdy and stable and hold you know some weight you know a heavy textbook or a laptop anyways i just want to share that with you guys i think if anything makes life a little bit easier it's definitely worth sharing because someone out there might need something like this this is one of those products that i never knew that i needed until i started using one and now i use it every day so it's a very handy product at least i find it really useful if you think that you would find it useful too definitely check them out i'll have viazon linked below and their amazon store it makes it easy because you can jump on amazon and check them out and like i said they also make other products too, organizers for tech gear on your desktop. I'm liking the idea of having more plants around me in the office here. It feels good to have, have them around while I'm working. Um, the palms, I watered all of the palms, so those are all ready to find a spot now. Family portrait time, there's all the elegans. I do have to get some of them into some pots though because right now they're just all in their clear pots. So I just potted them all exactly the same. So these clear pots really came in handy. I love how much drainage they have at the bottom too. Look at that. It's like all drainage holes on the bottom. Really well vented. I love these home note pots. I'm so glad they started making clear pots. I just wish they would make them in more sizes because I need larger sizes and that would be awesome <laughs> to get some large size. And they have really fair prices. And I know the soil looks super chunky when you're just looking at the very top of it, but I promise when you dig down in there and there is the cocoa peat and perlite and it will be holding more moisture than my regular aeroid mix. How did I not know that these turn into this when you separate them? I, I had no idea. All right, so this big one, this is the biggest one of the pot. So I think I'm gonna put this one in this pot, at least for now. I think actually this is the second biggest one. I think actually I might put this one in this larger pot here. That means this one gets to move into here. This is gonna be an ongoing project. I just wanna see how everyone does transferring them, you know, dividing them, transferring them from a peat-based soil into a coconut husk-based soil, and then seeing how they do in, you know, different types of indoor lighting. Oh, God. I was just looking at what I thought for a second was a mealybug. It turns out it was just a little piece of perlite stuck to the side uh, of the stem, but. Oh, we don't want mealybugs getting hold of these things. Luckily, it was just for life. Uh, no mealybugs, <laughs> at least that I've seen for a very long time in here. I know this decorative pot looks a little big with that plant, but eventually it'll grow into it. It'll be fine. I just love the look, the combination of the leaf or the fronds, the leaflets with that style of pot. Very simple, but I don't know. It gives me a good feeling. It feels kind of zen and calming and relaxing. I just want them to be like long-term staples of my plant collection. And I do plan on selling some of them because I, I won't need to have all of these because then I'll have like 50 palms <laughs> growing because I still have to divide this one too. But this one is, um, they're much younger, they're smaller, and there's a lot more crammed in here together. There's probably like three dozen. I actually took out this middle shelf thinking I would put some taller plants in here, but then I didn't like the look of it. So I guess I'll just keep that shelf for smaller plants. Okay, I'm just temporarily organizing them around the coffee table right now just so they can adjust to having just been divided. So they're gonna get to light from the door and the windows here. I'll put the short plants up there because at least they can still fit on the shelf. So yeah, everyone's just kind of temporarily here right now and 
I'll just see what we do in the future. I, I repotted some of my anthurium also into clear plastic pots. They needed to get up potted because they had outgrown their original pots I had them in. I'll insert some clips of the roots. These are Vitara folium roots and I had this growing in a terracotta pot and I've been growing my anthurium in terracotta pots because they love oxygen so much. So they like a really chunky airy mix so they can get lots of airflow and oxygen to the roots but they want moisture too, so they don't wanna be dry. So they, they have to have both moisture and the chunky airiness going on at the same time. And they like that condition all the time. They don't, they don't ever wanna go dry. And that's why I was growing them in the terracotta because they love that environment. They love the airiness. And then I made sure to just keep them watered. Normally I was able to keep up on watering, except when I got really busy during the gym show period. And then I got some brown tips because I started slacking on keeping up on watering. But you know, it's just part of it's part of growing plants. We're gonna have brown tips. In fact, I'm I'm gonna have some crisping too. So if you have anything like that going on, uh, don't feel bad. Things happen. <laughs> we can't be perfect all the time taking care of our plants. We're gonna have some brown crisping edges. They, you know, it's not a big deal. In fact, they get that kind of stuff in nature too. Sometimes they don't look perfect in nature either. So we can't expect them to always be 100% perfect in our care either. Um, also, this one I had growing on the bottom shelf. That's how that developed uh, was I had it blocked accidentally by other plants th that were on higher shelves and it was blocking the light from getting all the way to the bottom shelf to get this one. So it started yellowing and then it started to crisp at the bottoms because the leaf was just like, okay, I'm drying out and I'm dying and this is not working, so I'm out of here. And the plant was like trying to preserve itself, so we're okay up top there. But anyway, on another note, we do have new baby leaves coming in on some of the baby anthuriums, which are super cute, and we have lots of blooms going on. This one has a very juicy inflorescence there. I, if I had some pollen, I would totally pollinate that right now. Unfortunately, I don't, so I'm gonna have to wait and get the pollen from that one and pollinate this one over here because I've got another inflow coming there, a leaf, and then another inflow on this one too. So I can't wait to make some baby politiforms. And I got these when they were little seedlings and I'm really excited to see them bloom for the first time. So these are their very first blooms, like that one right there, very first one. Super exciting to get to see the, the progress on your plants. And this Vitara folium, also I got that originally as a seedling that has two brand new leaves coming. I also repotted the Clarinervium, so they're in nine inch plastic clear pot now so I get to see them grow. Hopefully they're not too mad about it because they, they also grow really well in terracotta. Oh this one has an inflow too up here with berries. If I can get the camera to focus. There they are. Oh I can't wait. I really want to make some baby clear nerviums. That would be fun. All right so I'm gonna get started in the next video actually so I'm gonna end this vlog now. Hold on let me put the camera back on the tripod. All right guys thank you so much for hanging out with me today as I was getting those repots done and kind of getting things tightened up around here before monsoon season rains hit. Uh, there's more to do though so I'm gonna let you go for this video and I'm gonna start working on the next one. All right I love you and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.